Hello folks, welcome. It is dastardly cold. <laughs> it is freezing. Uh, yeah, I fired the, uh, the biscuit kiln last night. And um, so I'm just going to unpack it. I've got these things that I just hang over the edge of the, the kiln here over the edge so I don't disrupt those ceram ceramic fibres. So, yes, it was quite a long bisque firing, but I wanted to make sure that I it was long enough to burn out all of the carbonaceous matter in the clay. So, to avoid bloating. So, the cone, um, yeah, I'll just bring, I'll bring the camera and then you can, I won't move around too much with the camera otherwise it, you'll get dizzy, I know. Oh, I'll just warm my hands a minute. So, uh, as you can see, we've, crammed it in there. Um, it's uh, a nice characteristic bisque look. And these are little toggles that we use for um, making cutoff wires. Yeah. So things are sort of stacked on top of each other, you know, fairly liberally. I'm not seeing any any nasty surprises. It's all looking quite good. Let's have a look at that cone. The cone is is down there on the shelf. That's the that's a that's a cone O five. Uh, cone O five. How? What's that temperature? Let's have a look here on the chart. Kono 4, Kono 5. I think it says 1888. 1888. So, um, but it's strange, you know, because see this cone here, this, see this one, that is a Kono 5. It's exactly the same cone. And that is a cone 05. Now you would think that the one on the right here, that the the bisque firing would have been a lot harder, wouldn't you? Because of the way it's melted. But you know what? It wasn't. That was softer, that bisque. More pink, more porous. And this one was harder. So what was the difference? I'll tell you what the difference was. Uh, this one, the cone went over rather quickly because the rate of temperature rise was rather quicker. Whereas this one, I got the cone till it was beginning to go over slowly, slowly, slowly. And I just sort of like held that and let it just go down much, much slower. This one went down much slower than this one. This one, that one there just went poof. That's because I was not attending to what I should have been attending to. Anyway, hey, let's get some of this stuff out. I want to see what's... So, it's always good to have wear boards for this, you know, to um, That 
so we should just pull the camera back a bit and then uh, there we are example of wax resist with iron slip uh, as it comes out of the disc. fire on there, I've got the door open here to let light in, so the temperature in here is going to be below freezing. Just going to load it onto these, onto these wear boards. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to unpack the whole kiln, you know, because it's a bit boring for you to watch. But I wanted to get some of these weavers tankards out. careful you know with these like tripod shelves where you've got three props and you've got a lot of weight that when you're unpacking that you um, you unpack the shelf sort of equally otherwise you suddenly find you take one last pot off and the thing dips down like that because of all the weight on that corner sip of tea I think <laughs> God, that's what you need isn't it a cup of tea to wrap your hands around yeah well Tell you what, that was that was a piece. This this picture was a piece that I had from Etna Furnace. It's been hanging. It's, it's probably made well over a year ago, and it's been hanging around. And you know, clay in its raw state, if you leave it long enough, it tends to sort of like oxidize on the surface. And that's exactly what that you can see the difference there between the bottom, which and the and the side. 
it almost looks the same as what it was when it was raw. It's weird, isn't it? I wonder if that's going to burn out. I mean, honestly, I thought that would have burnt out in a bisque. But it hasn't. Huh. Well. I guess we're going to learn something with that, aren't we? These guys are just uh, scruffito with the uh, the lemon zester, you know, like we like we've spoken of before a million times. <laughs> bottle. This has also been hanging around for a while but uh, seems to be okay. These are some um, some smaller smaller tankards. See, we can get quite a lot in, can't we? If we cram it in. Cram it in. Uh, in fact, that's what you were on the last clip. We were packing that, weren't we? Putting those tea bowls in. They all look. They all look okay, don't they? Don't actually seem to really observe any kind of um, real hardness difference between the the top of the kiln and the bottom which is good and I think that was as a result of me going real slow at the end there you know so you sort of like equalize out the um, any temperature differences which is good that's what you want so yes it's a Saturday the 10th of January and this is the view from my 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 kiln shed here. Oh, yeah, it's going to be cold tonight. It's going down, I think, to minus two. So let's go in and light the fire. I think I've got to get all this lot through into the into the into the main studio because I've got to start separating it out. Getting my glaze warmed up. <laughs> Still a few bits more to take out, but I'll do that in a minute. Thanks for joining us, folks. Uh, SimonLeachPottery.com is my website. Please go there. And we have tools and uh, 
other bits and pieces that you might find interesting. Uh, Skype, one-on-one uh, -on -one video cam pottery classes, if that interests you. Now we're in winter mode. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's about it. Other than that, yes, it's cha it's more challenging, isn't it, to get out into your studio if it's like cold like it is now at this time of year. But uh, well, we just have to dress up and keep practicing. I'll see you. Take care. Bye bye.